Get away from her, you bitch! And you will know my name is the Lord when I lay my vengeance upon thee. Ian, freeze! Get the cat! Do you sound hippie? To I'll be throwing one of these in with every purchase of 500 million or more. To peace. This hit goes out to you, Mr. Wick. Woke up this morning. 42 regular, wasn't it? Yeah. And so it begins. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You ready, John? Yeah. I'm guessing I'm back. Welcome back to DMR. Much obliged as always. So thank you for tuning in to this review for what will be a fourth installment for a much-loved franchise, which is John Wick for starring Keanu Reeves and, of course, Lawrence Fishburne as well. So we are well beyond a trilogy, well beyond a sequel or the fourth installment. And historically, with this many films in the franchise, they usually start to suck they usually don't match up or even compare close to the original so how do we go with keanu reeves this time around so let's go over it but before we do in true john wick style let's review a sharp looking black suit from mj bale all right so let's take a look at this thing so similar to the suit that i'm wearing in this review we've got the saunders black jacket and trousers slim fit from MJ Bell. Have a look at this thing. This is the suit that you want to wear when you want to walk into a room and blow away the competition with your style. So an MJ Bell icon, the Saunders black jacket, is crafted from 100% super fine merino wool grown in the New England region of New South Wales. The wool is RWS certified and woven in Italy into a black super 110s shark skin cloth. Have a look at that absolute sharpness and must for your MJ Bale collection. So John Wick number for $187 million at the box office back in March this year. It goes for two hours and 49 minutes, so almost three hours. It's a hell of a long movie and usually if it's drawn out that long, especially for a full film, it can be hard to watch. So we've got Keanu Reeves coming back as John Wick. Of course, he is excommunicado. He's basically been banished. He's the world's most hunted man. And everybody's after him still. Everybody is after this particular assassin. We all know where it started. It started back in his house where it was invaded by some Russian mobsters. They basically killed his dog that his wife gave him before she passed away or just after she passed away. And he was like, stuff it, I'm coming out of retirement, I'm gonna kill everybody. And that's basically how each of these movies have rolled around. I'll probably have to watch them again, one to three that is, just to get a bit of a refresh on the whole kind of storyline, but that's basically it. So, simple premise, everybody loves these films. And in John Wick number four, all hell is breaking loose. We've got a new villain that's basically played by Bill Skarsgård. I think it's how you say his last name. And he's a French dude and he's basically very high up the chain in terms of the undercover assassin world. And they're all hunting him. They're all hunting him. So I'm going to try to dance around and spoil as much as I can in this particular film. And obviously we've got the Continental. It's in ruins. It's basically in ruins in this particular scenario or chapter in John Wick. So what is the kill count like in this particular film? Over 150. 150 people die in this movie. It is absolutely nuts. So let's discuss it a little bit more. So a couple of the side characters that I really do love. You've got Bowery King played by Lawrence Fishburne. He comes back as he's basically Mentor, I would say. He's mentor is probably the best word to describe Lawrence in this film. He plays a great role. And you've got Donnie Yang playing a guy called Kane. Now, this guy is one of his main adversaries throughout the whole film. He's a blind assassin. A blind assassin with a cane. The way this guy moves around with his cane, and he uses sound as well. He's like a bat. He uses sonar to fight. It's unbelievable. The choreography in this particular film and gun carter if you do call that 
especially when him and Wick go up against each other. It's very, very cool to watch and be a part of. So this film is broken up into three main sections. One, there's a fight in Japan. Two, there's a fight with a very fat King Ping German guy in Berlin, I think it is. And then the third and final act is in France, I'm pretty sure. And that's when all hell breaks loose in terms of $40 million contract being out on Wick's head. Everyone's trying to kill him. He's trying to get to the final scene and everybody's after him. So amazing sets of cinematography that you do see throughout the film and just the whole dialogue between all the characters is very, very believable. And for two hours and 49 minutes, I was not bored, especially when the kill count is that high, 150 odd people dead. You would think that you would get bored after that, but it's such... And an awesome film, it's very well done. All the sword fights, gun fights are just immaculate to look at. Funny in parts, but you don't get bored in this film. You do not get bored in this particular film. That's probably why it's well into the 90s in terms of critics and the audience score on Rotten Tomatoes. So everybody loves this film. Everybody out there in movie land has absolutely lapped up this fourth installment for John Wick. There's also another cool villain in this particular film guy called Shamir Anderson that plays a character called the Tracker. This guy basically tracks Wick throughout the whole film and he has a dog. He's got a German Shepherd. So obviously with John Wick, his love of dogs, with his dog being killed in the first film, he basically has this guy that's after him throughout the film. And I don't want to go into too many spoilers about what happens at the end of this film with these two, but he's a very cool side character as well. What I did love as well in this film, and probably a lot of people won't notice it, I noticed it very much so, was a huge reference to the movie The Warriors. If you've seen The Warriors, it's about, I think it was the 80s or the 70s, where it was groups of killer gangs, I can't remember where it was, it could be Coney Island, I think it was. And it's an awesome film, basically one particular gang has to get out of New York, I think it might be, after a assassination on a huge gang leader and all the gangs are after them. Very similar in John Wick 4 where you've got a DJ that is basically coming in and saying, boppers, we've got John Wick, he's out there, she's tracking him as he goes through different parts of France. Very, very cool little side note or focus back on that particular film. And of course, the best for last, we've got Ian McShane playing Winston, the head of the Continental. Extremely charismatic character. Awesome job. So before I get into the pros and cons for John Wick 4, a bit of a fan theory. I've got a strong suspicion, I could be wrong, that John Wick and Neo from The Matrix are one in the same person. They're just a different version of The Matrix. So you've got Keanu Reeves playing both characters, Neo and John Wick. They look Basically the same in John Wick 4 and The Matrix 4. You've also got Lawrence Fishburne in it as well, playing a mentor type role to the main character. The fighting is very similar, obviously less the bullet dodging and flying in John Wick, but the way they fight in John Wick with swords and guns and all that, it's very, very similar to The Matrix. So think about that, do with it what you may. That's just a little theory that I have. So. The pros for John Wick 4, cinematography is immaculate, very, very cool to look at. I loved all the locations around the world. Everybody does an amazing role or plays an amazing character in this particular film. Very, very believable, so I thought they did a very good job there. You've also got the runtime on it. I wasn't bored. I wasn't bored for almost three hours of basically continuous action scenes, continuous action scenes. So the cons, probably nitpicking here, the Japanese or Japan scene was probably a little bit too long, but I don't think I can cut anything out of it. I don't think I can cut anything out of this particular film. So I will give it my number one rating, which is definitely see it in the cinema. I didn't get a chance to do that. However, I will be buying it on 4K if it comes out on the box set. So again, thank you for tuning in to my review for John Wick 4. And as always, laters on the men -Jay. Yeah, not really.
So there you have it, John Wick number four, a surprising fourth installment starring Keanu Reeves. Awesome film. Make sure you subscribe and join the DMR crew.